Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, or as you said yesterday, Oscar, hello from whatever time zone you might be listening to the recording of this in. Uh, gosh, I can see some lovely, familiar, friendly faces as a woo. There's some faces that I haven't met yet and I'm excited to meet. Otherwise, I feel like I'm on a call with just all my best friends, which is very exciting. I am just going to start letting other people in as well, multitasking, paying attention. Uh, gosh, must be early for you, Sarah. Yes, it is 5 a.m. in Hong Kong this morning. Oh, wow. Well, there you go. There's an honor, Oscar, that somebody else has got up at 5 a.m. We had Andrea in the U.S. yesterday at 4 a.m. start. So, wow, well, you're in for a treat, Sarah. Can't wait. Won't disappoint. And while you are waiting in the chat, please uh, type in one thing in the chat you'd like to improve in your listening in the next hour. What's one thing you'd love to improve? Pop it in the chat, one or two sentences, or what is one thing you'd like to improve in your listening? Not just for me, um, it's also so other people can go, oh, yeah, I'd like to improve that too. I'm glad they wrote that. I'll keep an eye out for that too. It's Where are called you Sorry, happy Oscar. generic time of day, by the way. Okay. Charlotte, which covers all possibilities, including a recording. Yeah. Hat, hat tip to Rob Welsh from Libsyn, who uses that one. It's not mine. I'm just stealing the idea. <laughs> oh, I like that one. I can't remember what Jim says when he starts his. It's He says some, some, something along a similar lines. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, Susie, where you're coming in from because you look like you're you look like you're standing outside, but maybe you're not. And I'm like, how warm is it? it depends on where in the world you are. I am outside. I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. We have had rain all week, and I couldn't stay inside another minute. It's oh. in the 60s, so it's not bad. Oh, it's not too bad. It's not snowy. No, like but we've had a miserable there. we've had a miserable week with rain. So I hope you'll tolerate me being outside. Oh, of course. No, you Susie, can I ask you a North Carolina question? Yes. The correct pronunciation is Raleigh, not rally. Raleigh. Thank you. You're exactly right, Oscar. Uh. Oh, I love the pronunciations. Now, the um, not the Tar Heels of North Carolina is very famous because that's where Michael Jordan started his basketball career. You're exactly right. All right, in the chat, we've only got a handful of folks. Please help your fellow participants out. What's one thing you want to improve in your listening today? Pop that in the chat. Listening is a contact sport. Today, you're going to be interacting a lot more than you would with any other webinar. Don't think this is a sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Um, it's an active, interactive game, a bit like basketball. <laughs> I'm trying to think what mine is, Oscar, because obviously I learned a load of stuff last night when I'm like, Ooh, what, what different do I... You can, you can put the same thing in again. Like, you know, true, but yeah, I will for the benefit of others. And that anybody that knows me knows that this is a uh, relevant one for me. High communication activator. I do way too much of it. Okay, a couple, a couple of minutes more, letting a few people in. Otherwise, we will kick off so that we get to maximize the time with all the amazing insights Oscar has to share with us. Thanks, Cheryl. Thanks, Susie. Karen or Karen, please tell me if I pronounce, pronounce your name correctly. I think it's really important that we get the voice right. Karen, just with a C. Okay, thank you, Karen, with a C. <clears throat> While you're there, Karen, with a C, remaining focused, is that in all your listening conversations or is that mainly with work conversations or mainly with personal conversations? Do you notice a difference in your focus based on the type of conversation you're having? 
I don't think it's distinguished between work and professional. I think it's distinguished more by um, if someone's really succinct and kind of provides more like bullet types of talking with me, um, I'm better than if people talk in paragraphs. Awesome. Isn't it great to know that's how we listen? Uh, we'll actually uh, talk about communicating how to communicate with each other because it's often the most effective way to do things. Karen, thank you for sharing. Rhonda, uh, listening for meaning versus the spoken word, very insightful. I'm fascinated by what that means for you in your context. If you're comfortable coming off mute and saying a little more about that, that would be helpful. Hey there. Typically, I, I hear the emotional side that I feel and I can hear that those emotions, but there's sometimes, especially if I'm in an unfamiliar topic area or I don't know the person well, that I get caught listening to the words, whereas later when I reflect back, you know, there were messages there on the emotions that I didn't necessarily pick up on. Yeah. And here's a dirty little secret of listening. I said it, I should say it in a whisper. Um, it's not our job to make sense of what they say as a listener. It's our job to help them process what they're thinking and explaining what they mean in their own words. Uh, often we put a lot of weight on ourselves when it comes to listening. It, it makes listening hard. It makes listening heavy. Sounds like it's that for you uh, Rhonda, when you come back and you go, oh, I didn't process that well, I want to show you a couple of techniques to make listening light and easy uh, for everyone today as well. Beautiful. Oscar, I think in the interest of time, we'll, oh, sorry, Rhonda, you look like you were about to say something in reply and I cut you off. Okay, all right. Um, in the interest of time, we'll kick off. I'm not going to do a long uh, introduction. You have all probably read Oscar's bio in the invite that I would have sent, um, but Oscar and I met a number of years ago in Sydney at one of the Gallup events. So he's a Gallup accredited strengths coach and an ICF coach. He did a session for us um, a little while ago and it was so useful. And then he sort of popped up again in my psyche the other day and I was like, oh, we must get Oscar back uh, around his new book and some of the new things that he has to share. We had a session yesterday um, with, with Amir and you are in for an absolute treat because there's some, some really beautiful stuff here um, along with other, uh, his other resources. So uh, without, let me just change my view, without further ado, I will hand over to Oscar. Thanks, Charlotte. Um, if you want to grab the book, uh, don't let my publisher hear me saying this out aloud, but the audio book version is the best version of the book. Um, if you love reading on Kindle and paperback, no problem. But um, the audio book has got some extra goodies in there, extended interviews and um, really interesting feedback from the people who've been reading and listening so far. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about how <laughs> How to Listening came to life. Uh, over 2,500 people were involved in creating the book. Uh, listening, as I mentioned earlier on, is a contact sport, so we, we needed to do it together. And there's a community of listeners called the Deep Listening Ambassadors that are on a quest to create 100 million deep listeners in the world, and specifically in workplaces, because the cost of not listening in workplaces is pretty significant. One of the things the ambassador community asked me to do and the difference between hearing and listening is action. If you've got a moment, write that one down because people say that's often a big insight. Listening happens before, during and after the conversation. Too many leaders focus on the dialogue in the moment. Good listeners focus on what's said Great listeners notice what's not said. Today, we're going to unpack all of that. But the Deep Listening Ambassador community said, Oscar, can you create a guide for hosting a video conference? Because it's really hard to listen when it comes to video conferences. If you are the host, um, we've, we've created an asset here, which is the ultimate guide to listening from host perspective. This is 
specifically uh, got content for Zoom. So if you use Teams or WebEx or Google Meets, um, the next version of this guide, we're creating one for Microsoft Teams. Uh, the version after that will create for Google. So watch out if you host. This is specifically from the host perspective. If you're a participant as you are today, I invite you to do two things. Number one, if you are a visual listener, that is you listen with your eyes more than you listen with your ears, there is closed captioning available. For some of you, my accent is not familiar or the content is not familiar. There's a slight delay. So if you hear something I say, and then you wish, hmm, I wonder what he just said. The captioning is just slightly behind. You can have a look at it down the bottom of your screen next to the chat button. And the, the button there is a CC, closed caption. If you're hosting any meeting, please ask the organization to turn this on by default. Most workplaces have many cultures, many different professions, many different cultural backgrounds and having closed captioning on provides a second listening opportunity for the group. But more importantly, it keeps the participant engaged in the dialogue. So tip number one, if you're hosting a meeting, please turn on closed captioning and please direct people where to turn it on. Tip number two, please do not be watching in gallery view today. If you're a participant, the most distracting thing is a group of people in gallery view. Please just activate the current speaker view. That will remove distraction. And you can also, on the three buttons under your name, you can hide the view that shows your webcam view of yourself. When we did an interview with Stanford, University who've done a survey of over 100,000 people around Zoom fatigue, hiding self-view is the most potent way to reduce cognitive fatigue in a video conference. So tip number one, closed captioning on. Tip number two, if you are the participant, speak of you. If you're the host, bad news for you, you're gonna work in gallery view. And then finally, make sure you hide yourself you you know what you look like it's okay and it's called the mirror effect it's called the icarus effect you get seduced by your own self-image and it's taking up cognitive processing capacity that's taking away from you listening now <clears throat> i want to show you a couple of really simple pieces of technology that's like a heads up display for listening during a video conference. These are virtual listening tools for Google Meets, Microsoft Teams and Zoom. These tools are basically going to explain the ratio of your talk time to your listen time. So I wanna share with you really quickly what they look like. And if you use some of these platforms, you may choose to do this. The first one is a Google Chrome plugin for Google Meets. And you'll notice here that it's tracking everybody's ratio of their talk time to their listen time. You can see Cheryl here is a bit of a talker. She's sitting at 76% talk time. Yet for the rest of the group, Sounds like she's talking to Joe and Matt Clark and Matt Cruz aren't getting a chance. Here's the bad news with this. The client is only speaking for 21 minutes compared to everybody else is speaking for 33 minutes. So it's a really cool tool to just give you a sense of what's going on. The next one's called Equal Time. This takes it a step further and it gives you insights around gender as well. So you can code the gender of the people participating in there. And as a host, you can always have a look there. So these are the Chrome add-ons for Google Meets. Let's have a look at what this looks like in Microsoft Teams. They take it a step further. They have sentiment analysis, positive, negative, and neutral. And it's analyzing language at roughly a teenage 
language level. So be careful how much you interpret out of this. But then they also track talk time to listen time. That's a common ratio across the tools. Talking speed, switches per hour, pauses, and the longest monologue. This is the Zoom version of that tool as well. Still tracking the talk time to listen time, the longest monologue, but also goes just a little bit further and talks to and tracks filler words and pauses as well. Now, these tools are handy. The one I would recommend is a product called Cyrano, which starts to analyze language at the language level of a workplace professional at 30 years of age. And it measures not only all the things we've looked at before, but also the commitment to the project, to the task, to the idea during the conversation. So I'm curious in the chat, what do you make of tools that track your talk to listen ratio? How useful might that be for you? Charlotte, thinking about you and your context, thinking about you and your clients, how handy would this be or not? Uh, no, well, definitely very useful. Um, definitely useful to see, you know, maybe in a uh, small group meeting or any size group meeting, you know, who's dominating the the, the conversation. I was sharing mm. with Oscar yesterday, you know, thinking about, oh, those of us that are maybe high communication that might sometimes do that and the blind spot. Oh, yeah, sometimes I need to do this. Um, one of the questions I've got, Oscar, is around... Um, when we're thinking about those people that are maybe a little bit quieter in the group who are perhaps more deliberative intellection that might say, yeah, but I, I don't wanna share something or I don't have anything to share or I'm told I'm a little bit too quiet in the group. What's some of your thoughts around that? Mm, well, I sense there's two kind of questions and two orientations there. The first one is um, the host is not giving them an opportunity to contribute. Uh, so listening is a simultaneous equation and it, it requires the host to interact with a group in that context or the leader or the person who called the meeting to interact with the other individual there. By the way, I am conscious there's 23 folks here. Please, uh, in the chat, just share your reflections. What do you think about a tool like this? Um, it's really critical to engage here, not for me, but so our other participants, we can learn from each other. We will do a breakout group exercise very shortly as well. Um, so we can also learn in the context of real time. Now, back to your question, Charlotte. The first thing is I don't think hosts do a great job. As you saw in the first uh, talk time one, the people, the natural order is one in a four person meeting one or two people are going to dominate the dialogue because that's their area of expertise and we just want to let them go um I'm, I'm not sure that's getting the best out of the group if four people are present there is a reason they've been invited and people should be making contributions the second part of your question i noticed you said um that they don't i don't feel like I have a contribution to make. It's a very interesting way to listen in for pronouns. We, we expand on this quite significantly in chapter five and six of the book. When you hear these pronouns, what are they telling you? In that case, uh, someone with high intellection, as an example, ask them to move their orientation for what I have to contribute and ask them what insights could they contribute that is useful for the group, not just the active speaker and the topic. Um, high intellection means they're good synthesizers, they're good at creating um, very succinct insights. So for people like Karen, they get it straight away. The final thing I would say is a contribution made in the first third of the meeting carries a much bigger weight than an idea contributed in the last third of the meeting, especially if that idea is a contrast idea to the group. What the group will hear if, if they spend two thirds of the meeting socializing an idea, creating a roadmap and trying to get to an outcome. If intellection lands a hand grenade, because that's how people experience it, it may be completely valid. They may make a really relevant point that the regulator won't allow us to do that or because of competitive pressure, we can't move our pricing that simply. The group feels deflated 
and think, why didn't you say that earlier? So three points I would make there. Number one, the role of the host. Number two, encourage that person to make contributions that support the group, not just their own opinion. And then the final thing is first third of the meeting carries a much bigger group impact than the last third. You could be destructive there. I'm not saying don't say it in the last third if the group's forgotten that there's a regulatory undertaking that we can't do that. There's a department of uh, attorney general's consent decree. I had to live through that pain in my time at Microsoft. I'm loving the people who've put the chat here. Um, just to, for the specific question here, it says, does everybody in the meeting know these tools are being used? Uh, recording or tracking somebody without their permission is called spying and it is completely illegal. Um, these products notify all participants that this is taking place. Um, it's uh, not ethical to do this without people knowing that this is taking place. So all participants are aware that this is going on. I don't have this on at the moment in my system, so you can't see that's going on there. So thanks there, Robin, for your question there. And um, Sarah, wow, no idea they existed. Very useful. Uh, Susie says, I use this uh, a note-taking tool for my coaching. It gives talk time. That's great. And it's really helpful. Uh, Susie, is that really helpful for you or your counterpart or both? Uh, if you're okay to come off mute, I'd, I'd love to hear more. It reminds me to stop talking and listen more. <laughs> awesome. And are you comfortable sharing the tool? It is. It's available through Zoom and it's something like Fathom AI. I'm not saying it right. I'll look it up and put it in the chat. But it's it's in the Zoom marketplace as well. It's in saying. the Zoom marketplace. Yes, it's and it it records. It gives you a transcript, but it also real time tells you how much you're talking. Awesome. Thank you. That's wonderful. Another tool to add to my uh, tool evaluation uh, guide that I'm going to put together because when people see these tools, they go, wow, I didn't even know they existed. So um, Cheryl says, useful for picking up over speakers uh, and those who under engage in for future meetings. And also the thing about the real time is as the host, you've got a dashboard to go more from them, less from them. Um, beware of false binaries, you know, introverts versus extroverts. Remember extroverts process their thinking by speaking out aloud. That doesn't make it good or bad. And introverts reflect, create insights and then share. As a host, you just need to be conscious of that. And these tools give you some very good indicators to increase your consciousness there as well. Okay, Tamara says, as a facilitator in pretty large group dialogues around equity, yes, yes. Um, awesome, trigger self-consciousness and the parts around doing the right thing. I think in DEI conversations, I love the gender here in um, the equal time. So tomorrow I'd say check out equal time if this is your area of practice focus. I think that's the tool that will support you the most and will also allow you to code other elements of DEI in the, um, in the tool as well. So you can do internal versus external conversations. You, you may choose gender, you may choose a cultural background uh, as, a, as a screen there. I think um, for people who are high learner, for example, just having the data is a really insightful thing. And sometimes some people can't catch the feedback, you know, you're, you're spending way too much time talking in the meeting. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm just sharing the idea. And by the way, no one else is giving any ideas. So I think I'm creating a valuable role as opposed to, by the way, 73% um, of the meeting with four people, you are doing most of the talking. 73%. Oh, my goodness. I didn't even realize that. Thank you for sharing. So stories work, statistics work as well. So thanks for sharing there. I'd love you to think about this concept right now. Right now, we all have a listening battery. The listening battery is green, it's yellow, it's red, or it's 
black. It's actually shut down in your in your cell phone, in your mobile phone, in your handy, depending where you're dialing in from. I'd love you to think about and pause right now and think, what color is my listening battery right now? In the chat, what color is your listening battery right now? And one sentence to explain the color from your perspective. Many of us don't realize that we come to conversations with our listening battery yellow or red, and maybe it's not the right time for the conversation. Sometimes we need to pause the question and say, look, now's not a great time. Um, I can speak in an hour, or can you just give me a moment? I just need to collect my thoughts. Please, I'm just gonna grab a glass of water, um, and which is literally what I'm going to do right now. Sarah, green is good, but what about green is it for you? I'd love to understand what that's all about. Moira, what's for dinner? I had shepherd's pie last night with mushrooms. So that was uh, uh, lots of potatoes in there. Susie as an introvert, I thought uh, I was light in the meeting room. So I have a lot in my battery. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, that makes much more sense than green. Very interested in the topic, says Cheryl. Early morning, so no distractions. Thank you, Sarah. Awesome. Notice you when your listening battery you can't give what you haven't got. Most people think focusing on the speaker is the place where listening starts. It doesn't. Level one of the five levels of listening is listening to yourself. If you're not conscious where your listening battery is, you may be setting up a very unproductive conversation here as well. Karen, thanks for the honesty around feeling fatigued. Uh, Charlotte, what are you noticing in the color scheme compared to last I was thinking just group. yeah I was just thinking just that it was really interesting and I was wondering why so yeah last night we saw a lot more orange and yellow and today mm. we're seeing a lot more green and um yeah I, I thought that was interesting and I'm wondering why <laughs> there you go well it could have to do with time of day it could have to do with group composition there's probably a number of things yeah. here um just uh, down the bottom in the reaction area, um, one of the things you can do in the reaction area is just have either a green tick or a red cross, a yes or a no. Um, I'm curious, how useful is the concept for you of the listening battery? How useful is it for you? I just want to get a quick sense of where everybody's at. If that's a useful concept, great. Give us a green tick. If it's not, Give us the red cross. And if you don't know where it is, it's under reactions at the bottom of the screen next to um, your chat and various buttons there. All right, we've got lots of people finding that useful. Awesome. So when it comes to our listening, I mentioned earlier on um, that, that listening is a contact sport. And what I want to invite you to do now, we're going to do a very simple breakout exercise. I want to explain the exercise to you. And it's a very simple exercise. Don't feel you need to turn your webcam on for this exercise. If your webcam is off, that's great. This exercise can be done audio only or with video on. Please don't think that because we're going into a breakout room, you need to put your webcams on. Um, let me share a few instructions with you. You're going to go into a breakout room with three people. One of those three is you. Very quickly, you'll look at the last name or the family name of the people in the group and whoever has the alphabetically first last name, they will go first. And whoever has the name after that, they go next, et cetera, et cetera. The first speaker will speak for five minutes. And then we will change. And the next speaker will speak for five minutes and then we will change. You'll get a broadcast message from Charlotte and I notifying you at each five minute track. What happens when you go into the breakout room? The first thing I want you to do in the first minute is just introduce yourself. 
Hi, my name's Oscar. I'm from Sydney. I'm on a quest to create 100 million deep listeners in the world. And what I struggle with when it comes to my work issues is how do we get to 100 million deep listeners in a sustainable way, in a way that isn't just a vanity metric, in a way that makes an impact? That's what I would say. And then I would go on to explain how I'm struggling with that. So each of you need to think about something you're struggling with in your work context right now. It can be as hard or as simple as you like. The more current it is, the more difficult it is, the more you're going to get out of this exercise. You will speak for four minutes after your introduction. For the other two people in the room, here is your instruction. You can only listen in silence for the first three minutes. And then you cannot ask any question other than, tell me more. That's all you can say. Tell me more. Nothing else. Just tell me more. When we come back from the chat, I will ask you to reflect on the following question. What did you notice about your listening during this conversation? That'll just be one sentence. I noticed this about my listening. I struggled with this or I, it was easy to do that, but that's what we'll chat about. So before we go, just yell out at me if any of the instructions are not clear. You're gonna get allocated into meeting rooms by Charlotte right now with two other people. The person who's first will be the person first alphabetical by last name, by family name. Are the instructions clear? If they are, we'll allocate you into meeting rooms. If not, please speak up. All right, Charlotte, looks like we're ready to go. One second. Okay. Oscar, you might get an invite. Um, if you obviously, don't accept your invite if you don't want to go into a room, but you are welcome to go into a room if you, if you want to. Okay. Recording stopped. You all, I invite you all to please make a short reflection, one or two sentences. What did you notice about your listening? Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. In the chat, please make a reflection. What did you notice about your listening while you were participating in this contact sport? Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. In the chat, please write down one or two sentences. What did you notice about your listening? In the chat, what did you notice about your listening? Charlotte, I'll ask you to notice any themes here. I will, um, I will ask Barbara shortly for uh, a quick expansion on her point, but we'll wait for everybody else to make their reflections. Thank you for everybody who's popping those in. Yeah, I think I'm noting the odd theme about um understanding the content a little bit about you know not not asking questions to maybe 
solve problems, although I might be adding the solving problems to my own content or my own thought process there. Um, I like Lissa's notice and my attention comes and goes when I listen. Mm. Capturing ideas, enjoying. There's quite a bit there about enjoying. I can relate to that as well. Now, what you may have noticed about the speaker is they got to a point where they possibly exhausted themselves and then they got more detailed and they slowed down and they went on a slightly different path from where they started off from. Your role as a listener is to help them make sense of what they're thinking and what they mean. Uh, with regard to the clarifying question barbara i just want to make an invitation if you're comfortable come off mute and let's have a chat about that hi there g'day hmm. tell me more about clarifying questions i found myself wanting especially when the conversation would get to a point where um we would say tell me more i just want there were just things I wanted to know in more depth or um I can't remember which person was speaking that I had I was curious um if they were something that they were saying made me want to ask them a question um it was just it made me realize how much of that I probably do when I'm listening mm. Mm. um do you know your number one strength um, well, communication's number two, woo is number one. Okay. So, but, you know, strength overplayed can sometimes mm -hmm. create, create a barrier for ourselves. One of the things I want us all to be conscious about is um, in this state, listening is, is very light and easy. The process is known by the speaker and the listeners. The value of your listening is not in your mind. The value of your listening is in the speaker's mind. And uh, in our research that we go through in the book, um, we ask people on a five point scale, rate your listening well below average to well above average. When we ask people to self-assess their listening, 74.9% of people rated themselves well above or above average when it comes to their listening. When we ask the speaker the same question, they assess 12% of people as being above or well above average listening. So most of us don't really understand what good listening is because we're in our own head. Our listening is there to help the speaker move from saying to thinking, to meaning. And, and we'll, we'll expand on that. We'll just touch on the five levels of listening as we go through the book. But again, the clarifying question I want us all to notice, is this clarif clarifying question for us, for them, or for the purpose of the meeting? These are three completely different orientations. If the clarifying question is for you and you are the coach, that is a great moment to pause and think about a clarifying question that is useful for them. Move your focus from what they say to how they say it and calibrate that with the direction of the conversation. Ask this question at the beginning. This is not a question about their coaching goal, by the way. What would make this a good conversation for you? Sorry, what would make this a good conversation? Don't say what would make this a good conversation for you because they will become very selfish in that moment. Any conversation, whether it's group or individual, requires three orientations, the speaker, the listener, and the outcome. We always want to orientate ourselves around questions for the outcome, not questions for clarification for the person in the role of the coach. Now, if you're not the coach in this context, then you're the manager, same thing. We want these people to come to their own conclusions as well. So thanks, Barbara. Um, it's a really common one 
as is, I want to solve, I want to fix, I want to create a, a deeper insight here. I just want to share with you quickly the five levels of listening so you can understand the framework that sits behind 23,000 people in our database, 1,410 people we're tracking in a longitudinal study around listening, and the 2,500 people we used in our research around the book as well. Uh, 1,500 people who didn't know anything about listening, didn't engage with us, and about 1,000 people who did. We applied the same principles of listening in creating the book as we do in conversation. So here are the five levels of listening, and this is basically the frame for the book, How to Listen. And the first level here is listening to yourself. Most of us don't realize that listening doesn't start by focusing on the speaker. Most of us don't realize that listening happens before, during, and after a conversation. At level two, we're listening to the content, what we see, what we hear, and what we sense, the emotion. There's a beautiful book that we'll include in the updated resources that we send out to you via Charlotte afterwards on a PDF. Professor Mark Brackett, Permission to Feel. It's an amazingly potent book about listening in educational context as well as business context as well. Because a lot of people say to me, Oscar, I don't know how to stop them being emotional in a conversation. Emotion is just another data point. Now in the model, at level one and two, we're listening to things. And at level three, four and five, we're listening for things. We're listening for context, we're listening for unsaid and we're listening for meaning. And we are listening for them, not for us. It reminds me of a story that Jennifer, a stay-at-home mum from Minnesota, told me with her son, Christopher. He was young and enthusiastic and came home from school and said, Mummy, Mummy, I'm so excited. We learned maths today and I learned the three is half of eight. <clears throat> Jennifer thought she misheard him and said, honey, could you say that again? She was distracted. She wasn't focused. She wasn't in the moment. And Christopher said, we learned maths, mummy, and I learned the three is half of eight. Jennifer, a former primary school teacher, put her hands in her face and thought, what are they teaching kids at school today? She went to the cupboard in her kitchen and she got eight M&Ms out of the cupboard and lined them up like little chocolate soldiers four by four, all facing each other on the kitchen bench. She picked Christopher up and put him on the bench and said, honey, can you count how many chocolate soldiers are here? He said, four, mummy. How many on the other side? Four, mummy. She said, see, Christopher, four is half of eight, not three. <clears throat> and in that moment, Christopher, like Superman, leapt off the bench. He went to the corner cupboard and he got a piece of paper and a Sharpie. If you're not familiar with the Sharpie, it's a texter in any other country. And he drew the figure eight for his mum. And what he did next was he folded the figure eight in half for his mum. And then he tore it in half and he showed his mum that using geometry, in fact, three is half of eight. Now, for many of you, you listen for similarities and you don't listen for difference. And for some of you, you got it early because you're visual listeners, not auditory listeners. But zero is also half of eight if you fold that piece of paper horizontally. You see, what Jennifer was listening to was what Christopher said. What he meant was he was thinking in geometry, not maths. What you don't know about Christopher is he graduated from college four years earlier than his counterparts. What you don't know about Christopher, today he's a world champion bug catcher. Christopher sees the world completely different. Now, by the way, some of you may be visualizing a net and a butterfly when I say world champion bug catcher. Christopher is in fact a world champion software developer. He's solved some of the most complex problems in the world. What you don't know about Christopher is he's neurodiverse, he's not neurotypical. Some people may call him autistic. Christopher would say to us, spend more time communicating about how you communicate and you'll have shorter, more powerful conversations and you'll get at least 15% of your time back in your schedule. 
along with the Deep Listening Ambassadors, we're on a quest to create 100 million deep listeners in the world. You've given us the greatest gift of all today. You've listened to us. And with that, I'll hand back to Charlotte. And if you do have questions, I'll be around for at least 15 minutes afterwards if you'd like to stay behind and ask questions. Before you go, could you honour the work of the Deep Listening Ambassadors in the chat? What is one thing you will immediately do differently when it comes to listening? Pop that in the chat. One sentence would be great. Over to you, Charlotte. Oscar, thank you so much. I um, obviously had a session yesterday. I learned lots yesterday and I've learned a lot today as well. So in particular, some of the questions that were coming through and people's reflections and picking up on those. So um, thank you so much for giving your time and sort of sharing and helping some of these people as well become deep listening ambassadors. Um, please do uh, participants um, joining, if you think this is useful, I will share the recording. Please do on share the recording with other people. Please do point um, people in the direction of Oscar's website. You'd love to listen to some of his podcasts as well and his books. So, you know, he has some amazing um, insight research on the different people that he's spoken to. So together we can all help uh, create those extra listeners and get even better as coaches. So Oscar, thank you so much for taking your time. Thank you folks for, for taking the time to join as well. This is probably the last one for this year, but my goal next year is to create more community learning events so that we can all learn from each other and the community. Um, so yeah, if you, if you need to jump, thank you very much for showing up. Have a great Christmas and we'll see you next year. But if you want to stay around and um, ask some questions or listen to the answers of the questions, feel free to, to, to hang out for the post show. Yeah, Sarah, I, uh, I love the story too. It captivated me yesterday with, uh, with that one. I was like, I, I can visualize this guy with the, you know, neck catching bugs and, you know, seeing them. I could see your, your reaction in your face when you were like, oh, yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Um, I need to go, but thank you very much, both of you. That was wonderful. Well, thank you Thanks for getting, for getting up, up early. Fiber. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm on to my Pilates now. I've got to go. <laughs> bye bye. Okay. Thanks. Everyone. Bye. Any questions? Was that a question, Cheryl, or a bye, Cheryl? It was a bye. Bye, Thanks, Cheryl. Cheryl. Nice to see Happy you. Happy holidays. Robin's literally in the dark. She is. I can see something. Something's moving around. <laughs> okay. And um, Fathom is the app that might save you a bit of time and money there. Charlotte. Fathom. Yeah. That's uh, what uh, was mentioned as one of those apps that uh, does the transcriptions and gives you the percentage of time. So I don't know, does Otter charge? Yeah, Otter does. Well, that you get free version up to something like 30 minutes of recording or one, you know, something like three recordings a month. And when I was doing my ICF PCC and you need to just submit X amount of calls and I was recording a lot of calls to do my mentor um, coaching I'd signed up so it was reminded oh I signed up for an annual reminded me I probably need to look into that so yeah thank you uh, Robin did you have a question you're hanging around which you're welcome to he wants to listen to Claudine's question and Claudine wants to listen to Robin's question and we get into an infinite loop then So Robin or Claudine, if you're still there and you can still hear us, if you'd love to come off mute and ask your question. Um, that'd be great. <laughs> Thanks, Robin, for buying the book. I really appreciate it. Awesome. Well, what I'm did going... you say? I'm sorry. Um, what did you say? I missed the part. I missed the part about if you don't buy the 